Hey everyone, welcome back to Tent Talk, the farmer's market podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets, how to increase your market business success, and in our current climate, maximize safety while providing people with fresh food. Farmer's markets are essential. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer or food maker selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. On today's episode of Tent Talk, we're talking with Dave Mead of Baby Clydesdale Small Batch Hot Sauce about packaging and people skills, two of our basic four Ps. Hey everyone, I'm one of your hosts, Bridget Myers. I've spent years as an on-site farmer's market manager, and I'm the education coordinator at Farmer's Market Pros. And I'm Kat Fields-White, director of San Diego Markets, still an active farmer's market manager, founder of Farmers Farmers Market Pros, <laughs> and host of the Farmers Market Pros Community and Membership Group. And I'm co-host Justine marzoni Need, Tent Talk producer and marketing director for Farmers Market Pros. Right, welcome back to Tent Talk, everybody. Today we are chatting with the one and only Dave Mead, founder of Baby Clydesdale Hot Sauce, my favorite hot sauce. Hello. <laughs> are He's we gonna... excited to be here. Are, 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 are we going to? Yeah, I'm, I'm loosening my lace. <laughs> are we going to disclose that one of our co-hosts is actually firmly attached to the aforementioned Dave Mead? Yeah. We are legally bound together. Uh-huh. Just team together. Every night. Every night. I know it's kind of crazy that it's uh, we've done over a hundred episodes and we haven't. And we've Dale. just now <laughs> gotten Dave on. How is that? We're happen? like, who else can we talk to? Uh, oh yeah, nepotism and cronyism. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> this proves that we aren't just. Uh, I don't know, doing favors for friends. Yes, That's right. Yes, it's taken us two years to get around to doing a favor for our friend Dave. <laughs> and our first in-person interview in a long time, since That's we're true. all in each yeah. other's yeah. bubble. Well, That's true. You can come live and in person. That's, That's right. right. All right, so back to Barber's Market stuff to talk about. <laughs> um, Dave, please tell us the short story. Because <laughs> I know you like a long story. Behind <laughs> Baby Clydesdale, how you started it, why. Tell us the beginning. The origin sure. story. Um, it's five years ago now. It feels wow, like oh. you know, a thousand at this point. Um, <laughs> and like the world just is yesterday, a very different place. True. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I was, I was like a, in a serious band, and then I also was working at an auto body shop that was run by my family for five years, and both of those ended fairly cataclysmically at the <laughs> same time. Uh, and I needed a reinvention for myself, and I felt I felt like I had valuable skills, but um, they were unproven to both myself and to other people, such as my family. <laughs> so I, I was like, you know, I I knew that I was good at sales, but um, I was you know dealing with people who had just gotten in car accidents which is Ooh. you know you're dealing with people who are in trauma in literally in trauma <laughs> yeah. right? and uh you know and it's like I, it would you know it would go well i guess as well as that could go but then i wanted to get into an industry that was not um full of people who were you know going through a negative life event i wanted to <laughs> going through something that was Being like... a happy well, place? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then it was like... And at that time, I felt like my options were, uh, based on, like, my skill set, were kind of limited because it's like, you know, making money in music, you know, <laughs> difficult. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not impossible, you know, and it's like you would occasionally get paid and that kind of thing, but, like, um, it's it's tough. Um, there's a lot of people who get paid before you, uh, such as the CEO of Spotify. So, <laughs> um, He's doing okay for yeah. himself. Yeah. Standing in the way. <laughs> so I wanted to, you know, I, I was like, okay, I wanted to get into uh, something, you know, like music where you can inject a lot of your own personality into it, but at the same time was not like this... Uh, metaphysical thing it's like music is just kind of this intellectual property thing (laughs) and if somebody wants to have it from you after you've made it um if they're using it there's no way to prove that they necessarily (laughs) paid for it you know versus something that you're you know physically eating it's like the controversy of somebody like you know if you see somebody like listening to music versus like eating a product it's like 
They most likely paid for that thing if they ate it. Yeah. So you, I wanted to. You can't to, stream food. You can't stream. Tangible food. things not, are not good. Yet. Tangible yeah. things are good. I used to sell print advertising and the whole concept that we were selling space. Right. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Tangible. I like the tangible. You can't bootleg so. a hot sauce. Right? That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, when I left the body shop in 2015. Um, and I had like some startup money and I had, you know, I was like, okay, we have an opportunity right now to actually start and do this legitimately. Let's see if we can. And it, uh, based on like, you know, the amount of money it took to start it up and that kind of thing, it seemed like the most viable option at the time yeah farmers market businesses are good not yeah. not too high a barrier yeah, to it's entry. Not... it's you know you can get in so why hot sauce so we the original baby clydesdale product is a craft sriracha right right yeah mm-hmm. so why that how'd you how'd you land on hot sauce God, there's so much to the story so, <laughs> uh, so I, why are you trying to kind of give like us some all aim? these different weird like avenues of my life some of which i went down to the end of the road until it just ended. Um, and one of those that I actually finished, unlike conventional college or anything regarding uh, education system, which I basically failed in every one, but I went to uh, this like hippie medicine school in Pacific Beach called the San Diego School of Healing Arts. It used to be on top of the Buffalo Exchange on oh, Garnon Avenue. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it was a wonderful place. And I mean, it was... It was half of, like, actual hardcore science that was, like, really hard and half literally dancing with crystals. <laughs> like, it's a balance. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. shamanic like, journeys right. and, like, visiting the lower world and communing with yeah. the fairy Yeah, I mean, it was, but honestly... It sounds like a logical intro to hot sauce. Where are we yeah. going with this? Well, it was like, I went there because they had a nutrition program, oh, and it was, like, yeah. an hour-based program, and it was, like, the entire program was, like, a thousand hours, and we did, like, 400 hours of nutrition and oh. learning, and, like, you know, and by nutrition, I mean literally, like, cooking, like... You know, if you cook beans, um, you know, you can cook them all the way. They'll hang on to their proteins. And I really learned about, uh, like, healthy cooking. Is it? Okay, it's just a hunch. I could be completely off base here. <laughs> yeah. but, but my guess is that this class, this entire school, was not aimed at making you a capitalist hot sauce peddler. No. <laughs> I brought that with my gotcha. Italian... East Coast jeans. Okay. Uh, that's what we do. We come out here from the East Coast with this kind of like uh, frothing at the mouth uh, capitalist gain. And then you incorporate it with this like laid back Cosmic. yoga culture and make this hybrid of the two worlds. See, now this all makes sense to me now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so then I was like, all right, well, you know, I want to make like a cool, healthy hot sauce. Um, so it to the public and then you know while we're at it let's brand it in a cool cute way because why not you know we're uh the heart you might as well um make the jars cute hey <laughs> why not is important it's one yeah. of our four piece right? it can be fun it, that's like the fun part you know it can it can be fun that's not something um, that occurs to everybody though i think people are like my product is the fun part i'll just throw it in this right. canister yeah. this little tub <laughs> this little yeah. snap on thing so mm-hmm. i think it really makes a difference when people think about the packaging and sure the branding i mean it's an album cover yeah you know oh. it's, a, it's an album cover and oh, it's like, got it's like there's your quote. there's your poll quote <laughs> yeah. when you've spent all that time making that album don't you know, and I, here's the thing, I've been in that band that was like, okay, we just spent, you know, two years, which was way too long, by the way, recording this album. Yeah. Um, and this is how you're like, you know, bundling it. Like, this is stupid. <laughs> and then also as the drummer in a band, you don't have any agency. In the, so it was like, I literally was at this huge juxtaposition where I was like. So you um, not only were making great hot sauce, going to create a great package. But you were no longer going to be the drummer. Now you're going to be yeah. the lead singer. Yeah. You're right. in your own business. But yeah, so I mean, it you know the packaging is the album cover, and you you've spent all that time making that product. So just finish the job. Put as much thought into the presentation 
of it as you did into everything else. And so was there a big research process where you had to dis I mean, did, was there discussion about, yeah. Oh, yeah. are we, we going to do, a lot. <laughs> yeah, are we going to do glass? Should, it's a miracle. It was still, you're still, you're still right. together. Oh, I'll tell you this right now. I'm glad, I'm glad we're talking about it. I'm, I'm clapping because I'm so excited. We can hear you. So, um, so there were some friends that I knew from like the music world and a lot of the infrastructure that I drew on to start this from the beginning came from the music world because you know there's a lot of uh, people who are designers mm -hmm. that I knew who had done things like uh, album artwork and I was like you know you can design a jar yeah. <laughs> and um, so I called this dude and he was like a New York guy and I kind of wanted some like fresh blood um, like I had some friends in town but maybe our relationship was actually a little too close at that time mm -hmm. like I kind of wanted somebody that I could really direct that the power dynamic was like i am hiring you yeah, and yeah. you work for me and right. it's not this like oh i hired my buddy it, yeah. it was nice to have this layer of like at the end of the day what we said was what this design yeah, yeah. you were the you client know? yeah we were the yeah. client yeah Actual make it more client. professional yeah another, right. another p that's like a professional relationship versus you get into a situation where your friend is like helping you out and it's yeah. like you know, Sometimes you, you, know, you, feel, you feel bad if you have to give them harsh criti yeah. criticism or if you are kind of like back to the drawing board, like mm -hmm. yeah. it's difficult if you're too close. So we found this guy that he was a friend of a friend yeah. that we never close. met before. So someone that you could yeah. trust, but that yeah. wasn't a, a buddy. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, he, you know, is a really great artist. Um, but that being said, I had a really clear vision. Yeah. And I've learned this through not only this process, but also through other similar uh, proceeds where if you have a clear vision and you're on step one and you could see all the way to step 100 and you've kind of uh, dummy checked your way throughout all those steps, don't be afraid to just, you're the producer mm -hmm. and just use that person as an engineer. There's other situations in which you're hiring somebody because uh, you want them to actually be the producer in that situation, yeah. but... Um, establish that role at the beginning. And I, I did with him. You know, yeah. I was like, I want this to look like this. I can't, I was like, I can't really draw. Some, sometimes I can, I guess, but I not a, a, I'm not not a very talented visual artist. Yeah. Um, but I am really good at giving direction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we came up against some uh, obstacles, I guess you would say, even with him at the beginning, where he would be like, okay, you know, he would be like, yeah, okay, Sriracha. He was like, and I mean, I'm kind of throwing him under the bus right now. He was like, Sriracha. He was like, okay, great. Well, I put some like Asian doodads. Literally, a direct yeah. quote they is were kind of like Asian, Asian inspired doodads. like design. I was like, what? No, I was like, that's not going on the jar, you know. And then, um, and I, I had to, I had to fight for that, you yeah. know, and like. Uh, I'm going to throw you under the bus now <laughs> because Justine it. was like, no, I mean, he already did it, you know, he was like, <laughs> and I was like, no, I was like, this is, I'm not putting Asian doodads on the jar. That's just not happening. Yeah. And, um, and I fought for it. And to this day, you know, I'm like, if those Asian doodads were on the jar, <laughs> I would be that much less happy about, uh, my product. So yeah. I had to, I fought for it along the way and I'm really glad that I did. Well, and when it's a farmer's market product, you're not sticking it in a box and you never have to look at those Asian doodads again. Yes. By the way, I just, I'm yeah. kind of feeling like that whole term is racist. Yeah. Asian doodads. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Oh, it totally is racist. racist. That was the thing. That was, I was like, yeah. no. I was like, get those off I'm like, jar. you're white. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. hot sauce. I've seen my no. kids making a hot sauce yeah. inspired by Asian hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Let's so not go there. It, but in a farmer's market situation, if you don't feel 100% about right. not only what's in the jar, but what's on your jar, mm -hmm. that's going to come across when you're talking to customers. You're face to face with yeah. the people sure. that are buying it. So you have to be even more sold. You have to hold on to what your vision is and not let somebody yeah. dilute that because you're the one that's going to have to pitch it. Yeah. Don't let things go. Like, you know, and I do this too, you know, when you're recording music and, mm -hmm. you know, you're the person who's going to have to live with that forever. Yeah. And yeah. don't cut corners because, you know, you're going to want to listen back to that later and be like, I am still proud of this. Yeah. yeah. And five you know? years later, like, I look at the logo and it, like, literally makes me chuckle. Yeah. Like, I, I still so really, it has, I mean, it, it's only five years, but it's, it has a timeless, like, it's still cute. It doesn't look like it's trapped in 2015. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think it kind of, like, 
transcends. And, and I think that's because we were brutal yeah. with it at the very <laughs> yeah. beginning. You know, I did not let things go. I was like, uh, um, and the, the more work you put into it at the onset of things mm-hmm. from that perspective, the less you're going to have to backtrack later. I feel like we say that in Vendor 101 all the time. Like, don't just oh, you have a great idea, you're so excited, like slap it together and figure it out later. Like put that thought into it in the beginning because you'll just save yourself so much like turmoil later and you'll end up with a much more satisfying product for yourself because like you were just saying, Kat, like you're out there, you're the one (laughs) asking, you have to stare at it more than anybody. I didn't want somebody to be like, what's up with these Asian doodads? And And you have no defense. Well, you know, the guy already made a few drafts and like, you know, we just kind of decided to like keep them on there even though I actually hated them. (laughs) And it's like, I didn't want to have, I saw that conversation happening and I was like, this is not happening. Dave, as as we all do, that is the conversation that would have happened. He wouldn't have said, yeah, don't you think they're cute or are they thematic? He would have said, oh yeah, I hate them. Can I you believe it? Can't help but be Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's just my experience, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't don't rush things out um because you want to get there quicker. Yeah. You know? Or because you want it to be done. Yeah, or because yeah. 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 And it's I think not really like that that is something that's hard as like a maker because you're like, I have you know, it for me. We we were definitely, you know, he kind of like right brain, left brain when it came to like launching our business. I was the one that went to vendor 101. I was the one that all, did all the regulation stuff and he was very much the creative director. Yeah. And so I'd get to a point where I'd be like, Dave, we have to like finish this packaging so we can like get our PFR and get our TFFP and like mm-hmm. file our trademarks and all this stuff. And I was kind of a little too like linear and attached to um, like, you know, checking things off my to-do list. And Dave was like very uncompromising. And initially there was that tension there but I'm so glad that he won those arguments because, like I said, five years later, we still really like the way that yeah, our product looks. Mm-hmm. And like I know that if it were the version that I rushed out, it would have not been something that had, um, you know, the the uh, it just like wouldn't be as good. It, yeah. I would probably not be happy with it now. And this is, of course, audio, but be sure and check Instagram and, and look at <laughs> the little horse with the flame coming out. <laughs> yeah, because Baby Clydesdale is... It's just one of those brands where it's like very, like, it's something you have to think about because it doesn't say like hot sauce on it. You know, like the brand, the name isn't mm-hmm. doesn't have what it is in it. But like... It's just one of those brands that it's just like makes an impression on you. People remember it. I mean, it just, there are so many good things that came out of it. And I think you guys kind of sounds like you wrote that line between progress and perfection because you yeah. certainly can perfection yourself into a hole that, and spiral yeah. 10 years yeah, later. You, you can't come up with a stop. label. Yeah. You, you do. Yeah. There's like an expression also in like music where it's like making, making a, it's uh, making hamburgers if you overhandle the meat, they lose all the flavor. So you go. have to... You Pull do, quote number yeah. two. <laughs> the vegetarian. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like you do, you put so much work into it, know when to let it go. It's yeah. a fine line between those two things. Because, yeah. you know, I've been in that situation too, where it was like overhandled mm-hmm. and then it lost all the spark. Yeah. So many businesses are like that. And yeah. just things in life, parenting is right. like that. You can't, don't yeah. do it too much. Or yeah. you, know, you, can, yeah. you can sterilize your own like dream. Yeah. Believe yeah. It or not. Overanalyzing. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of analysis, was there a deliberate thought process about jars versus tubs and pouches and glass jars versus plastic jars sure. and yeah. the size of the jar? So what, what powered those kind you of decisions? You always wanted a jar. I always wanted a jar. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Uh, versus a bottle. So you could you could either have a jar or a bottle. Right. You can mm-hmm. either have glass or plastic. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, plastic, I'm also, you know, going to like the hippie medicine school and that kind of thing. It's like, you know, plastic I have like metal. posters of whales in our right. house. Like I'm obsessed with like, you know, the ocean and the impending doom of our time. Yeah. And I, you know, I was like, I can't contribute to this. You know, yeah. we do, everybody does. You know, if you are a human on earth, like you, I mean, there's, how do you, uh, not contribute at all to plastics and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. And I mean, it's really just, I just, if I, if the name of the game is like, okay, we're going to be selling as much hot sauce as possible. The mental picture of, you know, that 
plastic jar getting stuck in like a dolphin's blowhole. I just <laughs> couldn't. The baby <laughs> pie tail, like yeah. poking out. Oh, that was pictures of like the albatross with like the guts all full of plastic. I was like, and there's a little baby you know, still bag in there. Oh, that's me at four a. That's why I can't sleep because I'm at five a.m. looking at pictures of an albatross gutted, full of plastic. Be, yeah, with like sad music in the background, just. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh. Hey, whatever, so, may, whatever makes you yeah. make a better right. decision. Also, at the time when we were first starting our business, it was kind of at this. There was this this moment of like, um, like critical mass of like people jumping on the sriracha train. Uh-huh. And for us, we we did want to kind of differentiate ourselves from you know the classic like rooster sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we thought like, oh, putting it in a glass jar really kind of made ourselves like stick out from that yeah um and also we really loved the color of our sauce so when choosing our labels we we chose that clear plastic label that tricked a lot of people they thought it was like silk screened on there or printed directly on that was a mistake honestly like <laughs> yeah. that the, like we uh the the labels that we chose um if we could do it again i think we could have done we could have had just as much of a uh, impact and a positive effect with a cheaper label. Are you saying like, something that doesn't wrap all the way around? Like that was the hard part. Around. I was like obsessed with you know having it totally clear. You see the Steve yeah. Jobs movie where he was like, "It's a perfect square," like, <laughs> and then like one of his coworkers was like, "Nobody cares that it's a perfect square except for you," and he's like, "I don't know, man." And it's like you know, I'm sure him, you know, R.I.P. Looking back on that was like. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe if I just actually... Was I love those up. labels, though. Yeah. Actually, I love your jars, and I will say slick. that they look yeah. very slick. They're very cool. Professional. I have had cocktails served at Bridget's house in those jars. They're my they're, favorite they're drinking cup, really I will tell they're you. They're a good size. Yeah. So, so, kind of the Welch's, like, you know, like, yeah. that was kind of the model, too. We thought, like, how, like, Welch's used to have those really cool jars that right. the, the jam yeah. came Remember, in, like, and then as a kid, Devil, you could drink juice out of them later, and so that was also kind of inspired by that and baby Clydesdale we kind of imagined as this like little cartoon character kind of so it all kind of played into this like very very playfulness but um like looking back now from a business perspective our packaging costs were were completely out of control control. um, I mean we were selling it for money that Made it up, made up for that. Yeah. Um, and eventually, when, still sold for eventually when we moved to a co packer, yeah. we were able to, you know, we were able to reel in that cost per unit. And we kind of did a lot of things like retroactively, but um, we definitely learned the hard way of like kind of putting packaging at the forefront of our business model and mm-hmm. like reeling people in. It was. I think the artistic design that we, uh, what was positive about Baby Clydesdale and how like the cute element of that was present on the jar could we have achieved that with a less expensive paper label i i imagine we would have been able to achieve that about to like 85 percent to 90 percent <laughs> effectiveness yeah um so also uh point counterpoint to the jar thing is that um we the jars did stand out because they were a funny size because they were a different size yeah and like you know a big thing especially Back then, I'm doing air quotes, but back then in 2015, um, when I, way, I, back. I, way back, way back, you know, it was like we were, you know, Baby Clydesdale was in these like big kind of like squad goals, kind of like, here's all the hot sauces together and here's a picture of them on Instagram and mm-hmm. we would be the only jar. Everybody yeah. else would be a bottle. Yeah. That being said, um, they were uh, more prone to breaking. Oh God! We had uh, so many. We had a, in the we mail. had a lot of breaks in the mail, and then uh, you know, not so much that it was like a big deal, but we'd also bring them at the farmers market. All the we'd time. bring them at the farmers we'd market, them, oh, yeah. Mazel Tov. and then, um, <laughs> uh, but then we also had some people specifically not carry us because they were in a jar versus a bottle, and they yeah. were like sell, like they were sending out. They had uh, probably certain square inches worth right. of space yeah. on their shelf. And, and also, yeah. I talked to Ali Ball about this as a merchandiser. She was like, "It's too wide for because yeah. you know because you're it's real estate, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so ours had a diameter of like three and a half inches, where most bottles would be narrower. And so, as a merchandiser, also you want everything to line up, and it had this the stature yeah. was different, and so it didn't really fit with a lot of displays. Yeah, um, but for us, it ended up being okay because we ended up really pushing 
at the farmers markets, and the farmers right. markets were by far the the you know that was mostly where we did all of our sales. So which is it, not how we imagined it necessarily no. at the beginning, yeah. for, but. Uh, then it turned out to like really be conducive for our personalities to like do like in person. Hop- Your personality Cer- <laughs> certainly did. Right. Or, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, if you yeah, so that's probably a good segue into the next <laughs> topic. Well, except I do want to talk about this actual little story on your label. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you have not only the net weight and the ingredients and the logo and you know name of the business that you have to have on the label but you also have like a story about eating burritos with hot sauce oh, in yeah, it. That's, <laughs> a, yeah. that's sure, on the sure. avenue, ginger one yeah. yeah yeah so i mean once again it's like if you're going to go so far as to make a product that is uh you can make a product that is either based on who you are as a person or you can not do that at all <laughs> and, you know, in this situation, we did. We built our own personalities into our product. And, you know, some might say we did that to an absolute complete fault. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think uh, it worked. You know, it worked. Yeah, if you have good personalities, that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think this, I was talking to Justine about this last night because it's like, um, you do have to take a good, solid assessment of yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of real like, uh, are you a good salesperson and are you good at uh, making a product and designing it and then also selling it yourself and building your per- personality into yourself mm-hmm. or into your product? Right. Um, if you're not, that doesn't mean that you can't make a product. It just might mean that you have to stay a little bit more in the shadows and you can be successful. See, you could be teaching Bender 101 with us because we say, <laughs> right? we say this every time. We say if you're the person that goes to a party and you find a book and you pick yourself a spot in the corner that you right. can kind of read and watch what other people yeah. are doing, you need to take those amazing pickles and put them in a box and get them over to Whole Foods where they can sell yeah. them. You know? yeah. So you may have a great product, but you're yeah. not a farmer's market vendor. Sure. If you, or, you know, maybe you have a nephew that's a bubbly guy and he can right. sell it for you. But if you're going to be a farmer's market success, you not only need the product and the packaging, but you need that personality. You need mm-hmm. to like to talk to people you don't know. I think Justine used to say about the hot sauce, and she's great with people, but she said her personality was so tied up in the hot sauce and the brand and it being your business that if she offered offer somebody a sample and they didn't like it, she'd take it kind oh, of personally. Yeah. 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 How dare you? <laughs> like, well, actually, oh, when somebody would say, well, actually, uh, somebody would be like, yeah, it's pretty good. I would be like, oh, pretty good. <laughs> what have you done? What have you done? done? <laughs> yeah. What have you done? Huh? No. I'm, I'm a doctor. Right? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. But I feel like you. I feel like you actually do say that kind of stuff. You would at the market, and it's like your personality is such that it works, right. and that yeah. is all tied into like the personality of the product. And you're like, oh, it's this sassy. is me. Like, yeah, right. it's, all sassy. it's a little sassy, and like yeah. it's a little spicy. Like, yeah. and that's your personality, and that's how it worked. I have seen it work like that before with products at the market. It not very often does it work like so cohesively where you guys are like this is like baby Clydesdale is Dave and Justine like that is how it works there but I feel like you guys did such a good job of like the hot sauce and you were like one <laughs> like, it, everything, <laughs> everything lined up yes. in terms of like I am the person who makes it I am a person who sells it we're Fine. you know uh, we're here on this beautiful day in this tent I'm telling you a story everybody's having a good time and laughing and it just mm-hmm. like we kind of stumbled into that kind of amalgamation just completely by accident. Like yeah. it, and it was really, really validating. Yeah. Um, the cautionary tale that I'm trying to tell right now is that like, um, if you, this is kind of maybe something that's difficult to imagine if you're not until you're in that situation and it's <laughs> not working, but yeah. like I've seen the people who don't have those sales abilities try to develop them on the fly and it's a little embarrassing. It's not 1981 and we're not selling funnel cakes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe that could work, but um, I've, I've seen that not work. And you have to know your audience. Like, what yeah, kind of market are you? Yeah, read the room. Like, read sure. the room. what kind of, yeah. you guys are in, like, San Diego. We're, like, cool and hip here. <laughs> and, like, we got a little vibe and a jive. And I feel like you guys can talk to tourists the same way you can talk to locals. Like, you just, you know, adjust mm-hmm. the level of 
saltiness. And it's just, you know, you have to know who's coming to the market, who's coming to buy your product. There might be markets where a carnival call out is appropriate and people eat that up and they love it. Yeah. It might I mean, just we be know, in a we different... We go to markets where funnel yeah. cakes are a thing. But it has to be but... part of your... You have to have that personality outside of the market. You can't just show up at the market and start hollering because right. everyone's yeah. going to know it's a front. Like that has to be like, oh, Joe, that's how he is in his life and he hollers from his front porch right. and his neighbors like that. Like it has to be already ingrained yeah. in yeah. it. Like, it has okay. to be authentic. authentic. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's Conan O'Brien who... And then there's Ed <laughs> Sullivan and there's David Letterman and there's all those people who's... Main talent is entertaining a group of people and making them laugh. Yeah. Then there's all of those people whose faces you never see and whose names you only hear in scorn and in vain, who are just behind the scenes and they are actually kind of the machinery of how that whole thing works. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just need to be like, amp- which, uh, which cog in the machine am I? Yeah, you need to know and, where you yeah. fit. And yeah. that was you know. a very like well understood between the two of us. I was always the behind the scenes, you know, I'm the yeah. stage hand. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, putting stuff, set, yeah. helping setting up, but when it came to the actual like sales of it, yeah, that is just not my strength and I no, felt uncomfortable just... doing that. And I, and I did do a lot of like the craft fairs and kind of the more the like boss lady, like yeah, artsy, she would kill, I then, would do yeah. really well there because it, it's just a different style of yeah. like selling stuff. But Dave was so good at the like, people are three feet away from you sampling your sauce and you're like kind of in the zone and it's this very kind of like cold call direct sales thing yeah. that um, he, I don't know, you got like like a buzz off of when, you know, you're oh, in yeah, that when zone. It's well, it's working. It's yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah. Just, yeah. But I mean, there's, there's David Letterman and there's this guy named Dan Olmeyer. That writes the jokes. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, he doesn't write the oh, jokes. He doesn't he write just the jokes. Like, he's just like the guy who's like, all right, tonight we're getting Pearl Jam. Or whatever. <laughs> it's like, you know, but there's reason for all of those people. Um, just figure out who you are. Yeah. You know, there's, and then there's other examples where that totally didn't work. There was the Chevy Chase show. <laughs> there was the Martin Short show. And there's things that, like, you imagine things would have worked, and they just didn't. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. I mean... So you... So tell us about maybe Clydesdale, what you, what you guys... Where you go, were going, like, the end of last year, and, like where you're at. Yeah, well, you know. we got to the point where, you know, we still really loved farmers markets, but um, Dave is kind of a serial entrepreneur. And... Uh, oh, I know one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Closely related. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so meanwhile, before, you know, I've, to- I've, I've had a variety of occupations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah you I guys know. are. <laughs> but like from when I was like 17 to seriously when I was like 30... Um, I worked uh, at a vintage guitar store at a few different vintage guitar stores. I worked mm-hmm. at this one in Encinitas called Moonlight Music, and then one in <laughs> Portland called uh, Trade Up Music. And um, I learned the world of like vintage guitars and drums and instruments, and um, like literally the same time as Baby Clydesdale, I started a store on uh, Reverb. It's called it's an app called Reverb, and it's it's essentially the Etsy for guitars. It's literally now owned by Etsy. Yeah, oh. Etsy just purchased it. Yeah, oh. and um, and then I had a, a f- I'm always just looking, always looking for uh, guitars. Just mm-hmm. it's something that I've always done, um, and you know I keep the stuff that I can't live without for myself, and then the rest I fix up and then sell. Mm-hmm. And I started selling a few, and um, they just don't come back because I really spend the time making them perfect. Mm-hmm. And it's like I know all the tricks because I worked at music stores for so long. And so then there was a point where I was, you know, really, I had, okay, I had Baby Clydesdale, which was really in process, but then I had so much validation from the guitar store. And it's like, I'm, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, music is something that I've wanted to do literally since I was, you know, eight years old. I wasn't eight years old being like, I want to play, or I want to own a hot sauce company. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was just this like weird idea I had. And it's like, if I have an opportunity to make it work mm-hmm. with, with music, I'm taking that opportunity. Yeah. But there was this like, towards the end of last year, there were days where Dave was buying and selling guitars out the back 
of our tenant, the <laughs> oh, yeah. farmer's market. Yeah. It's, and so oh, he'd meet God. a guy on Craigslist and he's like, oh, I want to buy your guitar. I'm working at the farmer's market. Come yeah. drop it off. And I'll sometimes give you hot he'd, sauce. he'd yeah. make more money selling guitars in the tent than he would <laughs> Oh, I would at the make way more day. money doing guitars. So. <laughs> so it kind of just, that rose to the surface and so... Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm right now. to the surface in terms of him determining that he really loves selling guitars better, or some market manager that said, "Dude, I want a percentage on the guitar <laughs> yeah. sales if you guys in the booth." <laughs> they like the market managers couldn't even grab their yeah. Yeah, necessarily. They were like, "What? What's you know, going on? Yeah. Like, Dave's here. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> he showed up." Um, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but I mean, that was also, you know, the farmer's market's a great public place to meet a stranger who is selling, you know, Hot like, or guitars. Here's a, let's yeah. meet at this public place with a ton yeah. of witnesses. So with Baby Clydesdale, was it a matter of giving notice to individual markets? And I think y'all are going to actually sell that product, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we are in the process. We don't want to talk about it too much because the ink's not dry. I, we got gotcha. you. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm feeling loose. We could, we could we're, talk about we're working, <laughs> we're working with a local cafe that we love. They're amazing people. And um, they were an account of ours. They sold our hot sauce and they really loved the product. They loved our personalities. They're interested in in moving that forward. So they were like the one kind of account we had, I guess you can call them that, where Mm -hmm. uh, um, they made it work. And, you know, every week I would bring them a gallon of spicy vegan pesto, which Mm is like a Fairly significant amount. You know, you eat like a tablespoon at a time. So <laughs> yeah. like multiply that times whatever equals a gallon equals that many customers. And uh, it was really successful for them. And then they were, um, they knew where I was at because I'm extraordinarily vocal about <laughs> everything. Yeah, everything. But then specifically being like, you know, oh man, I'm like in the middle of like recording this album and I'm uh, selling guitars and blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, okay, well, what do you want to do with this? And I was like, well, I'm kind of at like a crossroads with it. Like it's, established it's successful you know we get um we have a lot of people who have bought and liked our sauces but um as i've said you know if i have an opportunity to do something in music i'm just going to do that that's always going to win Mm -hmm. um and then we started talking we started talking like pre-covid and you know we were really excited and then uh obviously things kind of dropped off and then while everybody kind of assessed how to function in the food world during a pandemic and then a few months ago it, uh, we, we reconnected we reconnected and uh, so yeah so they are going to be taking over the operation of Baby Quizzo and I am going to stay on as a celebrated monarch <laughs> which is the actual the best, title right? yeah, that Jim I'm was going like to asking have. the lawyer he's like will yeah. you put this in the contract he was like him? absolutely <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be yeah. worshipped as a uh, queen, like a powerless queen. <laughs> Excellent. But Love it is it. cool because I think that um, for the buyers or the people that will take on managing it, they love going back to it. They love that we were so part of the product and that like it very much is a representation of our personalities and kind of, you know, our values and the things that we like and just our weird sense of humor. And like that is all wrapped up in the they product. That they is Amy Clydesdale. Yeah. They get it. And you know. so... Um, they were very like, hey, we want you guys to keep working with us and yeah, so to be part gonna, of it. So we're going to continue to have a percentage of the company and, and be involved in, in some capacity. Um, so it will live on in the hearts of um, those that love it, and we will have a hand in it. But it's kind of fun just to be like, you know, we're doing, we're going to do other stuff right now. Obviously, I'm very still involved <laughs> in the farmer's market industry and the farmer's market world. Um, and then that kind of frees up Dave to apply his talent in sales to other ventures. But it's great to see yeah. that the product that yeah. develops such a following at markets right. will will still have an outlet. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a fantastic run and a fantastic experience, and it gave me exactly what I like. Coming out of it, I got exactly what I hoped I would going into it. Yeah. Because you know, I wanted to uh, honestly going into this, I did not uh, feel good about myself. I felt like I should, but I didn't, and then. Um, you know, I was having just so much pushback in every aspect of my life from, like, family and bandmates, which is, like, a weird, gross version of a all-dude family that sucks. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I was just like, no, I was like, I wanted my own personal uh, validation out of something, and can I make something that I did completely, I mean, myself or ourselves, 
can something by my own design be successful? And the answer was, yes, it can be. So you and, ended up proving it. Yeah. Like you were saying yeah. at the beginning, like ventured out to see if you could prove that you could do this thing, something by yourself Any, and like, make kind of it like work. Anything, anything, anything at was, all. Yeah. And the answer and it, yeah. was, yeah, we, we did it, you know. And it's like, you know, we did these like 40 hour kitchen nights, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody yeah. could say we didn't because well, <laughs> we tried. You know, we, <laughs> we really, bought too really many tried. peppers and had oh, to. God. Yeah. Yeah. The kitchen nightmares story, <laughs> that's like a four hour episode. <laughs> yeah. um, but overall, yeah, we got 100%. You know, I'm almost thinking that like this podcast, this is like an exit interview for me coming <laughs> out of the coming out of that experience like yeah. what was that entire thing yeah and the, the answer was that it was overwhelmingly positive mm-hmm. and then I wound up the other end of the like kaleidoscope mm-hmm. just feeling ultimately better about myself more empowered um more assured about my own abilities happier you know and it answered a lot of questions that I didn't have validation about myself at the beginning yeah you know it was a nice mix. I feel like your story tells like you had a lot of passion for something like you were you guys were really professional, but also really passionate. And that was a really great mix. Like working with a spouse, I know, as a whole mm-hmm. thing in itself. And there's actually a lot of farmers market vendors that are married couples. And it's like you see yeah. the strengths of yeah. one and the strengths yeah, of true. another and how that kind of balances it out. And mm-hmm. then just kind of making it work at the market and having that personality and, you know, for being sure. feet on the ground, being... Yeah. Hands in the kitchen, like, I don't know, it just seems like this is kind of one of the things that Kat and I talk to our vendor 101 students about all the time. Like, what kind of farmer's market story are you going to have? Like, is are you doing this to, like, do it because you're passionate about it and you want to see what happens? Are you Is this your lifelong plan? Has it always been a dream of yours? And this is, you're going to be a farmer's market vendor, like, you're going to retire from your farmer's market Forever. vendor business? Yeah. Like, which a lot of our, fair amount of our vendors have been in the market for a very long Decades, time. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. their plan. Um, or is this something you're going to scale up? Is it something you're going to sell at the end? Like, I don't think you guys went into it thinking you're going to sell it at the end. No. So it just yeah. kind of evolved that way. But the I things that can happen. I kind of went the beginning, like, staunchly opposed to that. But yeah. it's like, yeah. it's, you know, it's just a testament to how much I've changed. Yeah, you grow and, and you I learn. I think the yeah. thesis of, like, our whole experience is that, like, you know, to connect it back to farmer's markets and, you know, as producer to wrap up this episode <laughs> of Ted Talk, <laughs> that, like, our experience in the farmer's market was... It was so empowering, Mm -hmm. and I think that that's what farmers markets offer to small business owners is this opportunity to kind of, you know, you you putting your heart on the line, you know, you're putting this thing that you created out there in the world, but um, because of, you know, our our privilege, because of the, you know, kind of our position going into it, and also our personalities and kind of the energy that we put into it and the the thought and the hard work we put into it, like we had an amazing time, and if anything it gave us the confidence to then be like, okay, well, what's next? Right. And I think that to kind of, to, um, for people out there that want to start farmer's market businesses or people that already are, this probably won't be your only business. And this is something that that Dave's dad (laughs) kind of told us when we started. And we, we were really like offended by it Mm -hmm. at the beginning. He's like, oh, well, it's your first business. So like, we'll see how it goes. Oh, literally the the old dude I bought the truck from, I was like there because I bought like a 2002 Nissan Frontier. Yeah. And he was like, is this your first time? (laughs) And I was like, first and last, this is the sword I'm going to die on, you know? And And it, it broke our heart at first, but now we realize like, of course, you know, and that's why I think is so amazing about the farmers markets is because for relatively low cost, mm-hmm. depending on how you swing it, like yeah. it doesn't have to be your life savings, but you can really like try something out, and if it works, it can lead you towards selling it or expanding it or totally taking it mainstream, or it can just be like, you know what, that was fun, and for five years we owned a hot sauce business, <laughs> and now we're doing something totally different, yeah. and it's kind of hilarious. But if it we didn't do Baby Clydesdale, it wouldn't have showed us that we can do a bunch of other things too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think right. that that's what's so amazing about the farmer's market is it can be the end, mm-hmm. you know, the thing that you always wanted, or it can just be a stepping stone to know that you can do a bunch of other things. Yeah. It's always interesting to see. I think as market managers, we kind of like build this machine and then like vendors come in and it's like, how are they going to work it? Like, what are they going to do here? And are they going to stay? Are they going to go? And so it's, everyone has their own little like system that they follow. And I feel like you guys just did, 
like a great job for what you did. And I, we always, and like, I'm sure if our listeners, like, this is who we talk about when we talk about like <laughs> having a great personality at the market, because Dave has always been one of my favorite vendors at the market. Cause he just has that personality to make it work. And no matter how long you stay in the market, it's like having that passion and professionalism and personality and packaging. That is really what it's about. If you're in the market for two years and market for 20 years, like yeah, sure. yep. all of that. It all works. Yep. Well, thanks so much, Dave, for coming on our podcast and speaking with us about Movie Clydesdale. It's been so nice to have you on here. <laughs> thanks for having me, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so nice because we first met, met Dave and Justine when they took Vendor 101. That's and I great. love all the people that we've met through our course. Um, and for our listeners, the Vendor 101 program, we've been teaching live, BC, before COVID, um, and in person since 2010, is now available online. So no matter where you are, if you're a small farmer or specialty food maker getting ready to launch your business in farmer's markets, or even a current vendor who wants to brush up or learn new things, you can now take advantage of all six class modules and a live via Zoom question and answer session with Kat and myself uh, when you register online at vendor-101.com. If you're a market manager suggesting that prospective vendors take Vendor 101, we'll save you a ton of time and deliver new vendors to your market fully prepared and ready for success. That's why we started this class, so that they can come in with way more knowledge than they do when they just call you and say, how can I start at your farmer's market? Uh, so believe me, it's very beneficial to everyone involved. Um, and registration is now open at vendor-101.com. You can also get there through our farmersmarketpros.com website. And we will see you in class. Farmers markets are all about community, not just for the shoppers, but for the operators, farmers, and vendors. To hear what's happening from people just like you in the farmers market industry in various parts of the country, or share what's happening in your area, we have terrific conversations and people sharing resources over in our private Facebook group, the Farmers Market Pros Community. Please find us there, answer the three qualifying questions, and join the group. You can also message us on Instagram at Farmers Market Pros or send us an email at connect at farmersmarketpros.com. Thank you so much for listening to Tent Talk. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you access your podcasts and tell us and others how you're enjoying Tent Talk. If you are listening on YouTube, give us that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss our next episode. Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast, is proudly produced by Farmer's Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzoni-Mead. Original music by David Mead.